Hello, hello, hello. KP, you beat us here, foos. Thanks for coming through. I'm here with Matt Curtin today. Matt, how you doing? I am nervous but excited. <laughs> yes, there you go. We are we are clearly uh, two DMs, if that is the case. Nervous and excited is how I started uh, this session. <laughs> oh, it's flat out. Oh, it's my my default state is f f frothing panic. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you wear it well. Uh, Thank you. Oh my gosh, Eli, get in here, guys. Bugles up. Got a bunch of heroes in the chat right now. Agreed, KP. Things go quick, uh, and you better be buckled in. Um, Matt and I actually know each other because we both work uh, at 24th Street Theater here in LA, uh, doing many other things. We do many things. We're busy boys. But uh, it really does crack me up, dude, that we basically like begin many of our mornings clowning for children. <laughs> No, sure. Yeah, shaking, shaking our butts in front yes, of second defenders. Every, yeah, like, and is that my, for you? Is that a career peak or a rock bottom? I <laughs> played the fifth. At yes, the second. wise. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, foos, get out of here! Appreciate you lurking. Appreciate you coming through. KP agreed. I, uh, dude, that's hilarious. I've never heard anyone plead the fifth followed by the second. That sounds like someone in West Texas. <laughs> I think it's a it's a bit from Inside Job. It was an animated show on Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Got a it. Dude, he was like Hart Dolph. It was a, it was a whole thing. But I remember seeing that once. I'm like, oh, that's immediately entering my <laughs> vocabulary. Dude, well, thank you for tossing it into mine as well. Um, Enjoy. And dude, I'm trying to think. We were essentially like rehearsing, and this was early January. And I'm wearing a shirt, darn it, I meant to wear it again. But I'm wearing a shirt that is just the the and like the ampersand from Dungeons mm -hmm. and Dragons. Yeah, the dragon. And do you remember yeah. what you said to me? You walked up and said one word. Bidet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said it just like that. And it was like Bidet to you, sir. But it was And I felt, oh thank God. I almost yeah. sounded so weird. No, dude. There is there is like a there is like a population of people who enjoy the medium but don't know critical role. So, and yes. like once in a while, I'll get a bidet at them and they're like, what? The fuck? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> or they haven't seen the first campaign, so they have absolutely yeah. no idea of what bidet means. No, dude. It was, I don't know if I've ever had that much communicated in one word. Straight up. Really? Yes. Uh, other than like some version of no. No has often communicated many things. Um, oh, sure. No, no, yeah. Flat out. Exactly, right? But dude, you spoke volumes in that. Critical Role, D&D, &D, many, many things. I, uh, I, of course, to Matt was like, so dude, are you, like, you struck me as a DM. And <laughs> dude, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Do I wear it? <laughs> I yeah. wear it on my sleeve, don't I? You literally like, well, dude, I will, I will take that as a compliment. Uh, because yeah. like, it really, I'm sure could be uh, twisted around however many different ways. But the... Um, oh, sure. Yeah, dude, I, I'm... So anyway, I, let's just dive into it. Matt's a fabulous actor. I, I have not had the pleasure of playing at his table, but I would fucking love to. Late honk. And, um, and Matt has an incredible series out right now. It's called The Game Series. It's essentially a scripted D&D &D comedy. Um, it's not like set in a fantasy world. It's about a home game that is extremely kind of committed. It breaks that sort of fourth wall immersion between normal single cam comedy and then jumping into these elevated almost like fantasy sequences um so we're going to watch that a little bit later but I'm, I'm curious matt like you know how long you've been working on that and if that was something that was immediately like on your mind as soon as you started playing well so the, it, the idea of doing a series for it was out of my mind well, how it started was, um, you know, I've been playing this game for like a decade, maybe more, not to date yeah. myself. <laughs> um, and when I got to college, I realized, oh, this isn't just for like nerds in small town America. Great. Um, so I like, I made it my mission to find like my friend, to get my friends interested in this hobby. So I would have people to play with, hmm. um, specifically my friend Lauren, who acts in the series and is yeah. my co-creator got it got it got it got yes. it and she, she plays the ranger is that right 
Yes, she plays okay, Aoife, the ranger. Got it. Um, she, uh, uh, I, so, so I've been trying to get her to play it because I know that she would really get into it. Uh, she just, she's very literary, very like, li likes to learn and likes, is very competitive at like board games and stuff like that. So I'm like, oh, this is, this is perfect for her. Um, so I tried for years to get her to play, but she's always like, eh, I'm just, it seems like a lot of commitment. I don't know if I have time to learn all those kinds of rules. You mean, you've probably heard it before. No, the rules um, get people, right? They're like, the book yeah. is so big. It's so many, yes, <laughs> hey, I have a whole spiel about how that's a bullshit argument, but uh, uh, I'll talk about it later. <laughs> yeah, save um, that. Eventually, it took, so it took years and an entire pandemic, but eventually, <laughs> Um, in her um, in her living room, uh, um, whilst we were you know maybe just a couple glasses of wine in, uh, <laughs> we uh, have uh, uh, she finally said okay, I think I'll finally try it, and I'm like great. So then yes. I like you know start tipsily talking about everything that goes into Dungeons and Dragons and what it's like, the classes, the, the whole vibe, and she's like, it'll be really great. Is it if we made a TV show about a group of people? played a game like Dungeons and Dragons. It could be fun. We could be like at the table and then cut to them like in the fantasy world. And I'm like nodding a lot and I'm like, wow, we are never going to play Dungeons and Dragons, <laughs> are we? It took, us, it took us a long time afterwards, but we eventually did. But for a while there, it was like, okay, we have to make a whole show about it if I'm ever going to get her to play. That is so good. You're like, okay, so I basically produced a comedy to get my friend to play D&D. <laughs> yes, I played the long game. <laughs> I'm committed. Oh, that is commitment. So, so how did you find the rest of your cast? Like, were you playing with them? Were they just actors and talent you knew, or? Um, well, uh, so um, they, were, they were pretty much actors and talent that we knew. Um, but at the outset, we were like, okay, rather, uh, so let's, f because the, the, the conceit of the series is like, Pretty much no one has like a perfect experience with Dungeons and Dragons. No one is like a veteran player of so many years. Pe people have a very tumultuous relationship to the game. So we thought we went to it into it like, okay, let's come up with just the just a, a basic party, and then let's think, okay, what is the the funniest like <laughs> like person player assigned to the character so like we have our friend garth who plays dumbledolf the muscle wizard he's this like this literally big jack dude he's a stunt performer in hollywood oh, right and um uh never played the game before in his life but he's like always like yeah man let's i'm, I'm down for anything like whatever it is i'll just you know do whatever um sort of like okay what is the funniest for like a guy who's literally just like twice my body weight? Yeah, yeah, um, he's he's Jack strapped. Hell. He's a jack yes. dude. What what is the funniest thing he could possibly play? We think like a wizard, because yeah. he's like he pro he has no mind for the rules. He for he like lovingly kind of forgets how to play every now and again. It's it's really quite sweet. With love. Uh, so he like for full on forgets that he has magic sometimes and just like goes in and starts beating people. But that's so good. It, it doesn't register to him that he has the lowest hit points yeah. as a wizard. Because so he's walking around with these IRL muscles. Yes. <laughs> but a light breeze will blow him over and uh... he'll go unconscious. So it's like we came up with five situations like that and, um, uh, and pretty much just casted people who we thought we were great. Um, we played like a home version of the game so we could um, all have a understanding of what it was like to play Dungeons and Dragons. And it's really weird. Everyone kind of like off camera plays exactly how their, um, That's how their characters do in the show. That's it's, hilarious. It's, it's really insane. That's so good, man. Well, we're going we're gonna, to uh, cue that up uh, probably a little bit closer to the end of stream. It Please. is truly fabulous there, there should be coming through on some of the chat timers uh a couple links this is you drop it in there it will connect uh but it truly is excellent work man i mean you know you you've been in the business long enough and i promise we will pivot fully to matt as a dm but uh this is this is carpe time where i need to get the deets okay <laughs> yes but dude like i'm sure you have i mean particularly over the past i mean five years but even like 10 years like Early, you know, 2011, 2012, 2013, you could totally, you know, get a 
a you know a, a cannon or like a 7d go we could treat we could put a a like a white sheet up or over a table and just pretend it's a restaurant like if i have a sketch i wrote about two waiters arguing i would just shoot it in my apartment and just cheat it yeah. for a restaurant right but somehow some way around like 2014, 15, 16, I don't know if it was just tech getting lower, but the ask for scripted, like the production level requests were quadrupled. Where all of a sudden exactly. it's like, okay, no, you need to be on set, you need the location, you need to be well lit. Look good. Exactly. Good. It in, needs in, to look like it's already a finished product. Million percent, million percent. Like long, like over are the days of this is a spec pilot that someone else will reshoot. Now it's like, here is a finished pilot. Will you buy it? And mm -hmm. you nailed it, dude. I mean, it's like, it, that. that is such a harder ask. I mean, brass tacks, it's more expensive, but it is, oh, it is yes. technically so much more difficult, right? I mean, to, I don't know. I mean, just, there's just so many factors that go into the lights, camera, action of it. So, um, I don't know, tip of the cap. You guys will see that whenever we get done with it. I we owe it all to um, our cinematographer who like introduced us to like our lighter our sound uh, cool. sound guys like this whole team that he works with at his company. Um, but it's so funny. Our cinematographer, he's great. Um, his name is Merlin Showalter. His I'm sorry. Is, what the fuck? Literally fucking Merlin is his name. OK, so your D&D &D scripted series was gaffed by Merlin. This is cinematography. He shot it even better. Yes, he shot wow. it. He's literally a wizard with the camera. It's <laughs> it was literally insane, like that we got him and like he was really jazzed with it and that's sick. Yeah, and I I literally I have no words beyond like it was just one of those things, you know. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, it's beautiful when that clicks, you know, and it's beautiful whenever like because some of that can get tough and tedious and the days stack up and the editing time stacks up and it's obviously so much more helpful kind of like in a play run whenever at minimum you can have a laugh or enjoy the person or in merlin's case he can cast purify food and water uh at the drop of a hat and oh, you know <laughs> in the hot we, we shot in the hollywood hills believe me we could have used purified oh my food. god dude that's hilarious yeah it looked it looked very good. Okay. So you said you've been playing for close to a decade. Allegedly. Allegedly. I know you're 19. Is the, um, like, was D&D was, was D &D your first tabletop? Like, did you play other systems? What kind of brought you into the fold? So the first system I played was, oh, gosh. It was a white <laughs> wolf. It, it, was, it was one of the white wolf systems. It was like... The Unconquered Sun or something. Ooh. I don't know. I, yeah, I, it, was a, it was a cool name. I don't think it was that. Um, if, if someone is intelligent, they can look it up yeah. and, and put it in the chat. But um, it was like, it was a little complex and strange. Like, lit, like I, it was one of those systems where like, if you've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for years and you're a little fatigued, try this completely weird other thing. Try this Salvador Dali version of tabletop role-playing games. Um, and it was fun, um, but, like, I was definitely craving, like, something a bit more accessible. So, like, yeah, yeah. I I, believe, I tried Pathfinder first, and I'm like, oh, my God, this is taking forever. Yeah. To play was it Pathfinder 1 or 2? It was 1. It was Got way it. back in the day. Got it, yeah. And, and you know, like... Uh, conflict takes like five hours. Yeah, um, it was uh, was it was insane. But like <laughs> towards like middle to end of high school, I started actually playing Dungeons and Dragons. I'm like, oh okay, this is it. This is this is the creme de la creme. All those things are fun. like I love a lot of things about Pathfinder. I think Pathfinder does classes a little bit more superior than Dungeons and Dragons does. Because they, they just don't subclass things to death. Yes, um, yes, 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 yes. Um, I love Dungeons and Dragons. I think Dungeons and Dragons is way more accessible, but I love what Pathfinder does as well. Um, but so it was just it was just way more accessible because I was a little kid just getting into it, yeah. and I was a fool. And the first player, first character I ever played was a lawful good paladin. Oh, let's so go! 
<laughs> one of those. Like, like it was in it was in high school though. So like I was like the rules guy. Like we can't do these things. Because I was really, I was really um, clinging to lawful good, and everyone else was just like, "But we just want to go over and kill those uh, people." We're Matt trying to get fantasy dumb. girlfriends, Matt. Damn it! Yeah, no, thou shalt not get fantasy wenches. Uh, that is you so shall good. Respect those wenches. You're like, listen, if you're gonna sign up for a fantasy wedding, then maybe we can talk about this. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Only in the lawful bonds of matrimony. Uh, the lawful good bonds of matrimony. That is so fucking good. So you were like going really hard. And by that point you knew like, or you were already an actor, whether or not you had owned that as a career. So I'm sure your role play was like, you were lawful good. <laughs> Believe it or not, I did not, I was not into acting until after I started playing to, as role playing. Really? I, is it that never connected? connected? Never connected in my head. I took, I got, I got into the acting game way late into high school, and I took uh, um, uh, an acting class, and I realized, oh, so it's like, it's like Dungeons and Dragons, but <laughs> people will pay you to do it. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> oh, dude, that's amazing. So, like, you, you were a player first, though, right? And like, how quickly did you know you wanted to DM? Was it like immediate um, or? It was, it was over time, uh, like, I mean, you know how it is. Not everybody is up for the commitment of yes. playing the game long form. Um, specifically, like, a lot of DMs um, were like, I don't have, I kind of don't know the time for this. Mm -hmm. I'm running all the other games and I'm, my job and life and yada yada. So it was really just out of necessity, like, I well, like I that. just like playing and... So like I'll I'll host the game I'll do all of the busy work just show up and let's have fun I lo I love this hobby too much to let it go. That's awesome, man. That in that yeah. like out of necessity, I feel like is somewhere between thirty and like eighty percent of DMs, where they're mm -hmm. kind of like, all right, dude, I played it. I know it's awesome. I talked up a huge game to my group of friends. They've made characters. They're half buzzed. We gotta go. The time's now, you know. <laughs> yeah. And Nothing's so you like like eleven o'clock at night, slightly blood buzzed, rolling dice with a bunch of weirdos. Yeah, a million percent, a million. So, did you play advanced D and D? Did you start in second edition? No, I started in fifth. In fifth, sick. Okay, cool, 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 yes. cool, cool. I've heard horror stories about like fourth and some in three point five. Yeah, I. I like I never, I built a character in 3.5 and I have, I've stolen a lot from different adventure books from 3.5. Yo, Sage. Look, Matt, I know how old Matt is and it's 19 years old, Sage, all right? <laughs> Bugles up for the prince. The full beard. Sage, I love you. I was lurking in your stream. I really enjoyed that. Um, no, but dude, I bring that up because I, and by the way, Sage is a fabulous DM. He was on about three months ago. We need to get you back, dude. You and I, one digital room, hanging yeah, get out. Get me out of here. Get yeah, me Matt, you know what, Matt? It's been great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're really honestly, Matt. You're that's all the time we have. Person. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, dude, that's so good. No, no, I bring it up because, like, the it, it, like reading adventure books, um, the Silver Marches, uh, the uh, original Frost Tomes. Um, Another great DM on Twitch, this guy Ninners that DMs with Fusca, they're both amazing. He put me onto this campaign setting called Dark Sun. And I really- Oh! Familiar? I'm familiar with Dark Sun, yeah. Right? Okay. And, and so like, I mean, obviously very intense. I mean, like it's a very, you know, Mad Maxi. I mean, oh, yeah. people are not living good lives for the most part. It's like tons of suffering. Um, Okay, Sage, you know what's up. Okay, well, yeah, I might have to port that over. But but I, in reading those, Matt, it became clear that the earlier editions, for better or for worse, like mostly for worse in terms of the general public's reception, but they had so many rules, so much jammed in. The spells themselves were like crazy. I mean, they could- Tones. yeah. Exactly, so much there. So many like different iterations of it. If you maintained it for this long, this happened. If you maintained it for that long. So like fifth edition, I think is a really beautiful consolidation. Mm -hmm. But I always love asking because for me as like the DM, sometimes I like to go back and like take a, take a spell from third edition. 
Oh yeah, it's just I, nasty. I love I love spelunking in the older edition stuff because there's really just like so much more because they it was like back in the day when they just like put out everything and they had the magazine yes, and they the, could yeah. like literally just every week was new content. So yeah, I love just mining that and then just plopping it and home brewing. I'm a serial that's, home brewer. I mean, I feel like that's like good artistry, right? It's like exactly. you don't, you don't yeah. borrow, you steal. Yeah, precisely. So, so was that like, did you, have you ever run like a full on module? Like, do you prefer homebrew? How, how does that work for you? I, I appreciate modules. I like playing modules. Cool. Um, but for DMing, I'm, 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 I'm homebrew. Like I homebrewed once and like, I can't go back. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's it's too good. It's way more work, obviously, but it's just way so much more satisfying. But I always I always like I always get the modules and I look at them like, okay, how did they structure this? Or like, mm -hmm. ooh, that's an interesting way um, to set up like a dungeon like this. And like, okay, this is their version of ship mechanics. Well, maybe I want to add this or mm. implement this, et cetera, et cetera. I love that. And, and so, are you like right now? I know. In Sage, I did not know that the Dark Sun was inspired by the original Mad Max. That's sick. Yeah, makes sense. Now I'm getting it. Um, mm -hmm. But Maddie, are you like, are you? Because I know obviously, like, you're acting, you're auditioning, you're working, you're doing post and pitching on the game series. Like, all of those things are are super time intensive and almost more than time intensive. That like creative juice. You know what I mean? Like the amount of juice I have in my tiny lemon heart is finite you know and, and so like for you are you are you still running games right now for example um so mostly i'm kind of i'm running games like for promotion excuse cool. me of, of the show of the game <laughs> uh the game in reference to the show yes um, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, yeah yeah it's re yeah we really screwed ourselves with the seo on that um <laughs> yeah that's intense uh, so um but yeah, I mean, like, because I know it, it's like, I've, I, I, I've almost done myself a service because all the work I do, like world building for the fantasy setting that's for the game, um, is just like stuff that we as the show can use to like market it mm, or yeah. to just like implement in a campaign or a future episode or what have you. Um, so like, yeah, I essentially Dungeons and Dragons is like almost a side hustle at this point. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, yeah, just all the creative juices feel like the same thing in that regard. That's awesome. Anytime there's synergy in creation, or fuck it, let's pull it back. Anytime there's synergy in Los Angeles, what a miracle. What a miracle that has occurred, you know, because it's know? like yeah. you're getting ripped, you're getting pulled. And I, I'm also very sensitive to the fact that, that it's like, I feel like in the modern age, in the 2020s, it's like, it's no longer do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. It's turn what you love into a side hustle and you will work every day of your life. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. Like that's sort of yep. now the adage has been pivoted. Um, so I, I'm glad that there is some concentration there and I hope that it's still able to, you know, be fun and be an outlet in that sense. Uh, no, sure. I mean, like, like I uh, long before I even played Dungeons and Dragons, I I world built for fun. I mean, I I didn't call it world building. I, yeah, I didn't have the lexicon to call it world building, but like making up fantasy worlds and people and cultures and stuff like that. That was always fun for me. So now I just do it and I write it off in my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I love that. Let's have a separate conversation about that off stream because I've got some oh, questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need no, some tips. Let uh, yeah. Let's talk about garnished wages. Um, <laughs> 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 but dude, I'm like, I love hearing that. And it's, I mean, it's very easy to believe that, like knowing you and seeing some of your content. W can you talk to us like about what that looked like in terms of, this was before you even rolled the dice, like D&D as a system, you weren't even aware of. Mm -hmm. it, like me, oh, uh, so like, it was always been like, I've always been in love with fantasy and just fiction in general. And it's, um, it's a, it's like, I mean, I'm gonna get really 
poetic, but um, its ability to um, tell the truth about the world and while lying completely. Yeah, like yeah. it tells the truth better than real life does sometimes, I almost feel like. Um, I, uh, so like, I, and I've, I love that so much. And I've always, I always wanted to emulate that. And like when I was a kid and we were, uh, was watching every TV show I ever watched as a kid, I would always, um, like, uh, speak along with the show. I would like come up with a character that's in the show. Like I did it for SpongeBob. I Dude. did it for Fairly Odd Parents. Amazing. Like, Wait, who's your character in SpongeBob? <laughs> yeah, who my character in Sponge Um uh something along the lines of um Tim Tuna. He was like a small little tuna fish and uh he worked in the he was like the other fry cook at the Krusty Krab because <laughs> always off because, camera. <laughs> yeah, because logically, just like um the logistics of the Krusty Rusty Crab to this day confuse me because sure. it's candid in the show that SpongeBob takes days off, but then the sh the restaurant is still open. So who is behind <laughs> the grill making the crab? Because Squidward's not doing it. Yeah, Mr. Crab is cut is counting his money in his office. <laughs> Who's making the Krabby Patties while SpongeBob has his days off? So I said it was Tim too, and it was me. <laughs> that is so fucking good. I love you seeing. So, as you can see, I was a DM before I was even yeah. a DM. <laughs> no, for sure. Well, that it's you like seeing something that's weird, right? Or something yeah. that you're like, that bumps me. What's up with that? And then justifying it, like finding a way yeah. to support Expanding it and bolster it. it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what good DMing is. And Sage, noted. Tax expertise. Yo, check your DMs. All right. After the stream, <laughs> check your DMs. Check um, DM. Check yeah, DM. yeah. Your DM from two DMs. They need your help. <laughs> <laughs> the DMs. The, the DMs. The DMs. Yeah, double DMs. DMs from these DMs talking about the game series. <laughs> Boy. Oh my God. Okay. So, so you knew immediately you wanted to be a DM. You were DMing before you even like started to actually DM a table. And then once you kind of got it off the ground and running, I I'm curious. And this is something I ask a lot of people, and there's, of course, no right or wrong answer. I'm just curious. Whenever you're building that homebrew, or let's say, let's say you're in the early stages of a world or a campaign, like pre-session zero, mm -hmm. and it's okay if there's literally nothing other than I, I go on a walk and I think about it. But I'm I'm just curious, what does that process look like? Mostly the mechanics of the world, the map. Are you are you thinking about that BBEG and how they lost their family, you know, or like, I'm just curious, kind of the, the, the genesis of some of the kind of beginning, middle and end. Cause it's so hard for people to homebrew. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fully. Um, well, I, I start in the macro sense cause, cool. um, I look at it in the way, like what I enjoy in like fantasy literature for example or just like fantasy media in general uh and i enjoy it and i think like the lion share in the modern age enjoy it when something is outside the realm of the typical like mm -hmm. at this point after tolkien got it right on his first try <laughs> and then the yeah. next like 60 or so something years everyone was pretty much doing diet or lime flavored tolkien yeah and there were good iterations of that that's so well but played by, yeah, yeah. But, but like in this century like that's not where people's interest is anymore people like even if you just look at game of thrones game of thrones blew up because like it was fantasy but it was completely outside people's preconceptions of Dude. what fantasy is um, Brandon Sanderson, his entire body of work is fantasy outside the realm of possibility. Mm -hmm. And so, like, so I start with, like, a little seed of, like, what's, what's some place that, like, what's, like, a fantasy world that people don't, like, imagine? Like, what's the show cross, essentially, yeah. of styles? And for, like, the game, for example, I thought it would be interesting, like, okay, how about what what would a fantasy world look like 
if people knew they were in a fantasy world. Mm. Like take all of the self-referential and jaded cynicism of the real world and of put LA. it in a, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And when you, cause like when you think about it, like, Heavily armed bands of misfits roaming the countryside and slaying monsters are the leading cause of death in every fantasy world. Yeah, like I am, like there is no version of an actual world where someone sees a heavily armed band of misfits and they're like, "Oh yeah, I'm gonna give those people money." Like, no. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, yeah. Going to invite some dark evil, some destiny nonsense is gonna uh. happen, and everyone's gonna die. Yeah, dude, so call like, the town guard is is, yes, is my reaction. call the town guard immediately. <laughs> These people are going to put their plot on our lives. Yeah. I'm just a peach farmer. So um, I'm shouting. But, <laughs> no, that's, um, uh, that's so good. <laughs> so, um, so like when I was creating the world for the game, like that's all everything is, is just mm. like dissecting tropes. Like it's the modern age. Capitalism is a thing like colonization is a thing everything that's like so like it's a bu that's like a bummer in our worlds that we can dissect in this fantasy world so it doesn't have to hit too close to home but at the same time it makes us think and sometimes makes us laugh as well yes dude yes 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 that's so well put and i love the backdrop because you're totally right i mean like I, I also love you know just reading fantasy i've taken so much of it and yo koopy Bugles up, France. I've been loving your cool. art and your sketches. And fuck it, you. Hope you're doing well. Happy cool. Wednesday. Happy pre-Thursday, which means we're almost to, wait for it, Friday. Um, but yeah, I I'm curious, man, like, w with that, <laughs> like, whenever you're talking about, you know, kind of like switching the expectation, especially in fantasy, right? Like, I I yeah. I'm a huge Wheel of Time guy. It, it was... I mean, I love, I love Name of the Wind. I mean, I enjoyed Tolkien a ton. I, you know, enjoyed very much the Game of Thrones or A Song of Ice and Fire, e, you know, pre-ending, four out of five. But it's- oh, Yeah, yeah, I love everything <laughs> except Buster Seasons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everything but yeah. the finish. Um, but are, are you, just so I understand it, because I find it interesting, whenever you're talking about kind of you know, building out a world and pivoting it. And I love, I love painting it through the eyes of the small peach farmer. Cause it really is like, oh shit. That's the murder hobo gang. That's who they told oh, me God. about in Belliard. Like they talked about those guys. Like they yeah. burned down a tavern. They burned down a tavern in Belliard. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, so like, is that, are you, is it still taking place in the vague European medieval-esque world? Or are we like pivoting more modern than that? You know what I mean? Um, it's, uh, uh, so I mean, like, yeah, like, yes, it's, it has all, um, in all, Aldia is the name of, like, this oh, continent. Cool. Okay. But, like, um, it's, like, all, um, a very, like, familiar, um, uh, Western European, uh, influences. People talk in British accents. Um, um. uh, like, and, and it's, but it's through the lens of, like, um, you know, you ever read, um, Terry Pratchett, Terry Pratchett's Dick's Discworld at all? No, I haven't, but I've heard of Terry Pratchett. It's a, he, he was fantastic um, fantasy writer. He wrote very, like, surreal, no, I, I wouldn't say surreal, it's like slapsticky, like, um, hmm. well, surreal, I always almost call it surreal slapstick, where it's like <laughs> all of these fantasy, he's in a big, lush fantasy world with all this thick lore, but at the same time, like his first like book, I think in this fantasy world was called uh, was a uh, was about a postman, because wow. you never because be, because you never imagine like okay in a magical world where people are like talking to through like cauldrons and stuff like that like what's the mail like is it how do people get their mail in this fantasy world and and it's a really and it's really beautiful novel it's and it somehow manages to be beautiful even though it's a ridiculous concept like that yeah no so, yeah, yeah, yeah so like it's all the familiar trappings but with the ability to be like we're we're in the like in the real world we're just a bunch of people um slightly tipsy around a table playing a, a board game so like like so like there's inevitably someone who's going to try to stab someone else in the butt yes you know? yes yes directly so, in like, the butt. 
Yes, and there's room in this fantasy world to accommodate for that. Because, like, I mean, that's what we do is like DMs as well. We accommodate yeah. the energy the butt our players give us in the fantasy world. Big time, dude. Big time. We're like, we're we're an, we're a broker. We're 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 an exactly. energy yeah. and fantasy broker. That's hilarious. Aikido. I, Koopy asks, does the world have beans and toast? Which I think is a very important question, just in terms of how British is it, all right? <laughs> there is an entire black market trade on beans and toast specifically. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the there king it is. Out beans and toast because the, the king is allergic to beans and toast. So now in the dark hushed corners of villages and hollers, you have these eldritch machinations of warlocks crafting arcane beans and summoning yes. up fires, <laughs> hell fires to scorch the toasts and combining That's... the two and selling them on the in black market trade. So and it's so it's like it's stuff like that. It's absurd, but yes. Yes. Um, it, but still rich with lore, which I Dude. think, which, which is like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons at its core in many cases. No, for sure, man. There's hopefully, it's just like a good anything where it's like, even just a good meal. Like, I don't care if you love savory stuff, just like a little bit of sweet is necessary. And even in the darkest, most overwrought, like serious high fantasy campaigns, I still want some weird street urchin named Slickety Rickety. You know who's 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 gonna you know just show How up. How do you know for... about Slickety Rickety? <laughs> He's Who the bean broker, dude. <laughs> Dang it. Uh, Insomnia, get in here, bro. Bugles up, Insomnia tonight. Another amazing DM, who I'm pretty sure I have on the hook in two weeks. Everybody, hold your breath. Matt, get the fuck <gasps> out of here, dude. We're gonna let Insomnia on right now. No, um, that is absolutely hysterical. If you're just joining us. We're with Matt Curtin. He's a fabulous actor. We're actually um, castmates in a show right now. And he has a scripted comedy D&D series that we're going to watch in not too long called The Game that I promise you will blow your fucking mind. It is very good. Um, okay, so that's just so funny, man. Like, I did not know that it ran that deep with the lore and the world building. And I, I too find it, I was surprised, like, I know we're both like write in our writers and, and enjoy that as a medium, but I I began running modules and in one of them, it was Dragon of Ice Bar Peak, the essentially like the backstories within the the party really wanted to be explored by the party. And so it just necessitated like a pretty massive expansion of the world. And it was really funny to me because I've long wondered, like, especially with Wheel of Time, like some of these huge series that, I mean, he, you know, Sanderson finished it, right? Like it, it just took forever to get done. It made me realize that sometimes I have elements within the world that, not that I don't understand, but that I don't have fully sourced in terms of tracked back. Like I see the scattered dominoes, but I don't know what knocked them over in the first place. and. I feel like sometimes in, in, in working macro, that happens to me in a good way where I'm like, okay, cool. This, that, the other. I know there's a warlock and he's he has this cauldron of beans, dude, and he's working on it, you know, but like finding where the beans fit, maybe I don't immediately have, right? Until session 40 or something like that. But is that something like, does that ring true for you? Is that something that like, that's not really how you operate? I'm more just curious. No, I mean, like, I mean, like, we're, I mean, we're actors. We've right. probably dabbled with improv. And like, so like any good improv, like scene, you know, you, you know the important stuff and then you let in the moment, everything fills itself out, right? Yeah, so yeah, I mean, yeah. for example, one of you, someone in your chat brought up, is there beans and toast in this world? Yeah. So, nope. I mean, I'm a regular person. I don't think about beans and toast every day, right? <laughs> So what You're... I just did is that I, but I know that in my fantasy world, stuff is absurd and it's vaguely British. Yes. So, I, so that so that explanation I gave you, I made that up entirely on the spot. Love it's, that. Love that. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So so in my, so, for me, I know I know that like if I just obsess over the minutia of everything, mm -hmm. I'm never gonna get a chance to play a game. Because I'll sure. just, yeah, because sure. that's all I'll be obsessing sure. over. Sure. So I so I just think, okay, I know how I how my brain works in improv mode. I know 
the big tent poles of which I can put uh, put a tent over. Um, and then I just like let it work itself out in the moment. I've had the most hilarious and also the most like intense and beautiful moments in a, in a session come from me just like working it out in the moment Real with time. the other player. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. No, for sure. I, I think that is very, very well put. And, and I, I definitely skew towards over prep, but one, because I just fucking enjoy it, but also because it, it does play into what you just described, which is that like, you're putting up tent poles. Now, whether or not yeah. we walk over there and put the tent up there remains to be seen. But whenever you mm -hmm. understand like the scope of your world that well, then I think it makes it so much easier to pivot on a dime, right? To get a question like, um, is, is there a master of bean and toast in this town? And like have a redirection for that, right? And right, yeah. you know, and, and Meatball raises a great point. Meatball, how you, how you doing? Bugles up. It's a real one right there. Do we know what he's angry about? No, but he's a meatball and we respect that. Uh, yeah, so why the hell don't you think about beans and toast every day, Matt? The fuck? No, I, I am a heathen. I Got am it. a trog and a fool. <laughs> and Meatball, you are the best of us. So I thank you for calling me out on that. I'm going to have to re-examine myself and I'll get back to you. Yes, definitely. Meatball, thank you for the accountability and for the truth. Right. And, thank uh, you for... Thank you for opening your space up to me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, this joke is over. I'm so sorry. sorry. Yeah, exactly. The sword <laughs> approaches, and on it is skewered a meatball. I uh, also just want to acknowledge Koopy saying the evil wizard Lord Chili and his army of beans. That's a good one. All right. Now, obviously, being from Texas, you put beans. Yeah, exactly. Take that, Matt. <laughs> use it. All right. So, dude, like, you're clearly homebrew master. I know you have, like, a lot of plates spinning. Whenever it comes down to like now, like let's say, let, let's say that you've built out a world, you have a feel for it, you have a feel for what's happening, who's holding what beans, etc., where Lord Chili is residing. And let's say that you have, you know, four to six new players come up. Are you, I mean, obviously each player is different. Some people will show up with like a novella. Some people will show up with a meme, you know? <laughs> but it's like, are you, do you like working in backstories? Like, are Session Zero's big deals to you? Like, how would you advise a newer DM that wants to homebrew? How would you advise approaching Session Zero? Um, well, uh, uh, it's so funny. We actually um, deal with this with this very same thing, like, in the, in the game. And I would say that, like, the character I play in the game yeah. doesn't handle it effectively because of certain, <laughs> like, character development skills he needs to go through. Um, I, session, I, so, like, session zero obviously takes up a lot of time and sure. most people just want to sit down and play the game. So, like, I'm, I always make session zero optional. Like, if you all are that stressed about, like, character building and, like, what's the most optimal build? Oh or, like, God. how do I even, what's a what's a saving throw? Stuff like that. Like, Dude. we can have that. We can make it fun. We can, even, like, you know, get a pizza and do that whole thing. <laughs> um, uh, um, but I always leave it optional because I know this game is most fun when it's played. And I'm... Mm. It's going to be a little bit of a devil's advocate because I know a lot of people don't agree with this. I am of the opinion that, like, the for new players, the best way to learn how to play this game is unfortunately just playing. For sure. Right. For sure. Uh, so, I, because I, I know there's, like, a lot of, like, um, anxiety that people have coming into this game where they want to be as... They want to study up on it. They want to be as, like, like good as the people who've been playing for years they don't want to drag anybody down they don't want to be bad at the game but really yeah. like it's yes it is on us as veterans as people who know the rules and played for years to like you know open it up a bit be patient like invite people in like yeah we're having an intense combat and it's fun when combat is very high stakes and fast paced but like if you have a question Let's yeah. answer that question so that you don't have that question later. And then you can get to a place where you're as fast as everybody else. So, I mean, that's how I handle it. But really, like, you know, in the broader sense, like, 
Everybody is different. It's all about listening. What do you need in this moment to have the most fun and to mm. feel the most comfortable playing this game? And how can we provide that for you? That's what that's my policy overall. That, that is very, very well put. And, and I think especially highlighting, I mean, obviously particularly with new players, but you know, some some veterans like remain this way where they don't really want to be like too on the spot sometimes, right? Or they certainly don't want to feel like, oh, I'm I'm slowing everything down. Oh, I'm getting in the way, which obviously is rarely true, but is way easier to feel that way about. So I think that's wise to kind of like, I mean, you, we just don't know what we don't know until we're faced with it. And right. that's especially true in D and D, where you're like, oh shit, how does silvery barbs work? Like, uh, yeah, you know, should I use it now? Wait, what's a reaction? You know what I mean? And like, those things are super helpful because then you realize that it is kind of imperfect and that's okay. But then you're also just like flexing that muscle, getting it done, you know? Hmm. That's so good. The, uh, okay, Koopy says, after feeling your way into the dark for a while, you start to get a hang of things. Love that. It's also more fun to figure it out on the go than researching like a class build. Completely agree. I've heard it described that like backstory is, is like can be really helpful for a new player or for any player early in a campaign to kind of give them a reference point, maybe some sort of like litmus with how they would react or respond to a quest giver or whatever. But it, it becomes more about like the world and the story that's being told by the party as the campaign progresses. And that's, right. that's I think like the best D&D, but. Yeah, I agree, I agree. Um, uh, uh, and like, and like, as to speaking, as you said before, there are the people who come in with the, like the binders filled of backstory yes. and like, the okay, ranger. yes, yeah, no, sure. Yeah. Um, Eva, <laughs> that's also who Lauren is as a person. She made an actual binder filled with lore and that's I had so to incorporate good. it all. And I'm like, <laughs> you came up with, seven you brought me a binder, right? It's a binder. Yeah. But like, also she's, um, there are people who like that, who are new to the game and who are very literary and. They come up with a rich backstory, and that's appreciative. But and you have to be patient with those people, because um, you want them to have fun as well. Sure. So um, you open up space for them so that they can learn down the road that, like, hey, maybe you don't need a binder worth of backstory in order for this to feel like a real person to you. Um, so that's the one. And also, um, uh, her partner, who's also in the show, Maggie. Oh, um, I didn't realize that. Cool, cool. Yeah, uh, uh, she came into the show and was just like, I just want to be a pug. If you can make me in the pug, uh, I'll be happy. And I'm like, okay. So we literally just like, you're a pug. You're uh, a goblin who wears a pug onesie. And that's it. And that's and she's living her, and they're both having the exact same amount of fun. So it's literally just like, have a frank conversation with someone. Like, how, like, how can we, how can I best service this character that you want to play in this fantasy world. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and listen, if that pug like picks up more or less attributes, sweet. But like, that's what she wanted to play. And that's yeah, what that's like it. got her pulse going, you know? And completely right. agree, Koopy. Those are the best kind of characters because then you're connected, you're excited about it, you're having fun with it. Is there, like, <sighs> I always love asking this. I think this was a balls too wild question, but but Meatball, this I feel like is is in your wheelhouse as well. Is there a like a type of player? Like, because they talk about like the actor, the adventurist. You know, we, we mentioned min maxing. I had a guest on last week, Eli, who talked about max minning. Like, they like to build characters in the reverse, where it's almost like a hindrance, which is super funny and very on brand for, for them in a hysterical way. Um, <coughs> but, but I'm curious, Matt, like, have you. And maybe, however this wants to hit you, I just think it's an interesting question. Is there a class or a player type that you find more difficult to DM for? And I don't mean like they're a problem player necessarily. I more mean okay. like to adjudicate. Um, I, so I hate to say it. But <laughs> say I it. Do, I, I do have trouble sometimes with min maxers because that's not how i play because gotcha. like i know that's not how i play i i love going into like uh it's like i mean you have you ever you ever played like rpgs on video game consoles and stuff like that you fucking like, insane Fallout. of course right so there is nothing more beautiful to me than like taking your first steps out of helgen 
in oh. Skyrim. Like anything could kill me. I don't know where anything is. I don't know who anything was or whatever the heck. I don't know if I'm gonna be like um, a magic user or a sword or like whatever the have you yet. All I just know is I have all of this possibility and danger yeah. around me. Yeah. And I am so psyched to like <laughs> become awesome eventually. The yeah. journey is always like the game for me. So, but like when I go into min maxers, I have this friend. Um, his name is uh, uh, his name is Zach. He's um, he's a serial min maxer. He knows it really grinds my gears whenever he creates a character that's like just broken, just utterly yeah, yeah, yeah. broken. He knows it grinds my gears, and it's a it's a joke between us. But it, it and it's and it's like it kind of takes the wind out of my sails sometimes because it like I set up these like kind of like dangerous encounters for low level players and he's like oh combat is over in two rounds yeah smite smite he created just like a barbarian like um alchemist armor builder build yes. that apparently can like move to 120 uh. <laughs> in two seconds and snap people's necks oh like, man i'm a barbarian a warlock thing. monk my background is as a paladin i uh that, that's so good now is that this is that our zach is that the zach i know uh no different zach okay cool, zach, cool, cool, cool. I yeah, yeah i could i could see that man i mean the the wild thing because i i occasionally i wouldn't say i build characters min maxi i do often like sometimes get caught up in combat that way where i'm like okay okay if i upcast heat metal and then i shift uh into a bat and just fly away. They can't. They can't break my concentration. Okay, you know what I mean. And and like I think there are there is a very grounded realism to that. Like characters in D and D would know how hit points work. They would know how concentration checks work. Right. Right. In a yeah. sense. But um, but I completely agree because it's it can be hard whenever what someone else finds fun, you're not sure if that's getting in the way of other people's fun. Right. So in that situation, oh yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, but, no, and also getting in the way of like like your fun as a DM because like yes, you're you're as much of a player of this game as anybody else. Yeah, you want to service other people, but you want to derive your own joy from it. And I yeah, like boy. watching my players like overcome obstacles. Like that's that's joy for me. But yes, you were saying no, a thousand percent. I, well, that's very well put. What I was going to ask is that it's just kind of curious how you how you dealt with that and not that you needed to deal with zach but like how you treated that especially at low i levels. mean uh, the uh, zach they are a competitive little gremlin <laughs> um so i just re i realized that like okay uh because zach dms as well i'm like okay you clearly just want a challenge all right i'm gonna i'm i'm going to come up with sporadically placed situations where you're where this kid where this absolute unit you have created is going to be in trouble you created yeah. a vampire oh no the big bad has like an undead smiting mace yeah a What's necklace of sunbeam oh no <laughs> oh no sunbeam yeah Oh, dude, that's Why great. Why does everyone have Sunbeam all of a sudden? Well, it's not really as drastic as that. I don't do that to them. Sure. But, um, uh, but you know, I, I always figure out a way, or at least I try to. I, I'm, I, I'm not perfect. I always tr try to figure out a way to, like, okay, how can I turn this, like, obstacle, this, like, discrepancy in our player to dm relationship how do i turn this discrepancy into just a way we can have fun with each other yes yes and that's such a great way to view it because i i i mean i'm sure you're a member of like dm academy on reddit or or any number of of like forums i i i am sort of loosely addicted to reddit i don't know it happened over the pandemic now i'm just like on reddit but um <laughs> it, it is amazing to me how many times dms are coming and basically being like dude i've got this like this warlock and like all they want to do is like cast invisibility on themselves and and like kind of skirt around combat and try to like do cheeky stuff and oftentimes like the the advice which is so on the nose is some version of like well cool give them like goals in combat to skirt around with while they're invisible on the side mm -hmm. of the map you know and, yeah. and it, it sounds like in the example of zach that's like a brilliant way 
you want to challenge your players. Balancing can be hard whenever you have one like OP, fifth level, whatever. And I love that. I love the idea of it being combat and like emerging as some like, some like huge solo beast that is just mm -hmm. on him, you know, or whatever mm -hmm. the case would be. Like that's yeah, yeah, smart. Yeah. I love that. Okay, so yeah. Meatball, what, what you got for us? This looks awesome. He says that I, I'll say that I have the most difficulty with the video gamer. Got it. Which is very close uh, to the chosen one main character. Yes. Preach, baby boy. As someone who plays with a lot of brand new players, I run into a lot of people who can't get out of the headspace of trying to find the best move or decision in order to win. Yes, yes, yes. Thoughts on that, Matt? Have you come across situations like that? I do. Um, uh, 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 yes, uh, I, I have, I've had some players like that. They're like very... It, it's the it's the competitive and that like I want to like it's like coming into this like I've played a lot of board games or I played a lot of games I know that winning a game is how you play games and you know I try to rob Paul and pay Peter in that yeah. sense like like okay you clearly want goals so like let's set up a thing for your character specifically like okay you you will win the game you know that you will have fun when you win this game okay well here's a quest you have to you personally have to collect five jewels and along the course of the adventure for the whole party like you're you're collecting these jewels so like that's how you track your progress it's um mm. what uh, there was a there was a term that um, one of my uh, Brandon Sanderson, he calls it um, uh, like a flag pulling. It's that you set up markers to let a person who is very into progress yes. towards an end goal know that um, they are on their way to succeeding at this yes. thing they're progressing yes, towards. Yes, 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 yes. So, yes, yes. I, so yes, so like more like like what I said before, it's all about for me anyway. Um, how can we take this discrepancy and just turn it into a way where we're both having fun. Mm -hmm. Dude, that's it. And, that, and that's really like if you had to, not that they're all discrepancies, but find a way to take fill in the blank and make it fun for everyone is like essentially what DMing comes down to, right? Like that's right. very succinctly and, and, and nailed on the head. Guys, I'm going to dive into some of those comments, but, but Matt's response just prompted some thoughts of my own. I, I, I think you would appreciate this, Matt, and I feel like it's relevant. We, um, like in, in one, like in my main ongoing home campaign, which began as Dragon of Ice Bar Peak, it's now very much like off the rails and, and into homebrew world, but it's into a bunch of stuff that I, I did largely have planned and now has been like expanded on. But there's a, the god Thalos, like the storm tempest god. Um, he's like a chaotic evil god. You know, I think of him as almost like Dionysus meets Zeus, like powerful, heathenistic, you know, just like getting after it. And there was all kinds of effects. I mean, of course, storms, like unseasonable rain, all kinds of sort of tempest effects. But there was also this massive impact along the coastline with fishing communities, with like fish communities in the ocean. A lot of them like not being salvageable, a lot of them being like pulled out of the nets, rotted and foul, almost like this gelatinous, slimy filth. And I found that the more I was able to establish, especially like, I mean, we're on like a year, we're almost, we're coming up on three years. Like I need to finish this campaign and I'm about to. But I found that the more I was able to show them the effects of like closing that one temple or returning that one artifact, now the fishing community's back. Now, whenever they come back to Neverwinter, it's actually they've built a new set of docks, right? Like shit is popping off. And I think, I think you're right that like, it feels maybe to us or to me sometimes like a little too on the nose, like great job. But we really do long for confirmation as players that we're following what the DM wants us to do. You know, that just feels good. It feels like you're having an impact. Yeah. So I, I think that's just great advice. No, I, I mean, like, <clears throat> it's, um, it's, it's like, like all, all of the really great R RPG video games of the past, like 10 or 12 years, your Dragon Ages, your Skyrims, your yeah. Fallouts, like all of that is centered around giving, letting the player know that their actions have consequences, but also effects. That's why it's a big sand, that's why sandbox environments are so 
big right now is like people want to feel like they are in this world and by affecting this world they feel like they're a part of it and mm. and like that's mm -hmm. pretty much all yeah. dungeons and dragons the whole conceit of it is that like you can do anything and then anything has consequences and effects yeah 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 you know do totally and like i feel like in life we do get hit with the consequences right hashtag right. tax board hashtag garnished but but it's also one of those <laughs> yo the only time i want to hear the word garnished Garnish. is on a fucking martini mat all right it's like <laughs> <laughs> but like it, it is it is so satisfying whenever you feel like you're having an impact you know mm -hmm. like even for us like we joke about shaking our butts uh as clowns for kids that's all very literal uh that's all okay. that's all yeah. exactly truthful no hyperbole there. to what is happening in the mornings of our weekly schedules um but but it is so satisfying to hear them laugh right like right. It, it, it's it's there's no I've never really done children's theater like that, like this much. And I, I wasn't sure I was gonna like it. And there's obviously ups and downs, but at minimum, you see them be like, damn. Like I, I've had so many, I've had so many kids, I'm not even trying to do this. I'm sure they do, where they're like, you're a really good actor, you know? And I'm like, bro, <laughs> bro, like, thank you. Like you're seven, but cool, you know? <laughs> you don't, yeah. Um, and it's it's like you're you like we, we inspire those kids. Yeah. We show them, oh, like this is we're regular people, but we can do these really cool things that like excite and entertain. And like maybe those kids go off and do it themselves. And like that's yes. our effect yes. in the world. Yes. Yeah. And I think I think the DM to player analogy there it totally lines up because how many people play and then are like, damn, I'd love to DM. You know, like, yep. damn, I, I'd love to try this. Like, how does this work, et cetera? Perfect, perfect metamorphosis. That. No, it is, it's cyclical. Okay, I wanna dive into some of these comments. I appreciate you guys. Koopy, that's intense. I played with a bunch of min-maxers as the only kind of weak character in the group, got you. Felt very different, like a different air than a group who's engaged with lore. I feel that. I mean, nothing wrong with min-maxing. I think all of us here, Matt and I, I certainly know this of you, Koopy, as well, like really do enjoy the stakes, the world building, the lore. And sometimes whenever that gets trumped to just kind of play like combat dice, sometimes that can be a little bit tough. I had yeah. a chosen one type who was smitten with my sorcerer, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> Wait. That happens. Uh no, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a whole other mind filled to navigate. Yes, no, 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 it is. Uh, Meepo says the winning the game mentality often comes at the expense of the other players at the table. Love it. Hence the overlap with the main character. Completely agree, Meatball. I'm not sure where that comes from. I think it is sometimes accelerated by video games. Um, and strangely, yeah, I, I agree. Right? Like, I think I think yeah. there's so much like first person that that's sort of like how we're used to taking in fantasy sometimes where it's like oh no my add says let's go fight the dragon like we should all fucking go right now and fight him um it um there was an analogy that uh brendan lee mulligan who i love he's very um good. uh uh calls he says hiding the medicine in the snack which is like <laughs> okay this person is clearly on a different wavelength from everyone else in the group and yeah. it's kind of Hampering the energy at the table. How do I Aikido them into getting on the same wavelength? Like, oh, yeah. you wanna, you uh, you you have are having a main character syndrome, whatever thing right now. That's, I mean, that's fine. That happens to people sometimes. Yeah. What? Um. So, so like, uh, you're in order to get this jewel. Oh, your jewel is in the hands of this of one of your fellow players nemeses like mm -hmm. uh, the two of you can like yes, bond yes, and yes, yes, yes. work toward overcoming that so like mm -hmm. just the aikido analogy redirecting energy into doing other things that's my million percent uh, approach to it that, yeah. that is so well put and listen like obviously pick and choose that there's times where like maybe your lore's already been established and you know they they know where the jewels are or whatever but but the more that that synergy can be woven together where not only the party members have a reason to work together but now two people through the same action are getting different things that they both wanted you know what i mean and that's yeah. rad that's rad um okay 
I love this. So uh, he finishes, there will be consequences, but there aren't dialogue trees or recommended action list. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah, that's where video games break down in RP. Hmm. Koopy, I'm gonna figure you, I'm gonna find a way to get you in because I play a lot of online stuff, so we'll figure that out. Sage says the human aspect also makes everyone think that they're at the center of the story. Million percent, dude. I mean, I think it's like we're all just as humans kind of walking around in the center of our own little plays and mm -hmm. how much more so whenever we take that to the tabletop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I right? Agree. I agree completely. Yeah. Okay. Well, Matt, we, like, so we've talked a ton about like world building, about lore. I, I feel like I, you know, through some of your performance, through, you know, what we're about to watch, like, I mean, I, I've seen so much of your table presence, but I'm curious, is... Like, how do you, like, how, how big of a part is combat in your games? And then subsequently, this is a question I rarely ask, but how big of a, a part are puzzles in your game? Ah, puzzle. <laughs> so, um, I always like to throw out, like, just like a litany of different kinds of things. For the most part, like, combat, combat's pretty much in there. Combat is the bread of butter of Dungeons and Dragons. It's how mm -hmm. like the lion's share of people enjoy this game. Mm -hmm. But um, I, there was, I, the, um, there is a system called um, uh, t uh, Tides of Numenara um, okay. that I, I tried out not that long ago. Science, fantasy, very surreal, existential. It was a, it's a really cool system, but they handle combat they call them crises or crises, mm. if you will. So yeah. like uh, instead of combat encounters, they're crisis encounters. What happens is it's not necessarily fighting someone it, or it, it could be, but it's not necessarily fighting someone. Sometimes like um, it's a heist, it's a mm. chase sequence. It's like a fate or could be figuring out a puzzle before something yeah. happens. Yeah. What I like to do is, and I have puzzles as well, and I, I like to throw a diverse array of things at my um, uh, at my PCs, but I always try my best to filter it through the lens of the, the combat encounter system. Everyone mm. has turns, things are happening, you need to accomplish things, um, whether it's running away from a beast or trying to shut a gate yes, or yes, like yes. just trying to hold fast while... while someone casts a magic spell and seals a gate or something like that. Um, because, I mean, just the combat encounter system is so streamlined. We all have a lexicon for it. But, you know, how can we reinvent the wheel? How yeah, can we yeah. throw things at people that they that they don't necessarily know concrete what to do in a given situation? Just mm -hmm. twist that extra bit of challenge onto it is what I like to do. hundred percent. So can we like tuck into it? Like what, what, can we steal some of your moves? Like what, like what have you twisted that you really liked? Okay. So my favorite thing to do is um, uh, when I want to like come up with like uh, BBEG or like, re or instill like, I want these, I want my PCs to be united against a common thing. Fuck yeah. Uh, what have you. I always like place it early on, first couple of sessions, and I make it like they meet the bad guy. Yeah, and I make I it that. a, uh, I, I make it a crisis, um, uh, a crisis encounter, but I preface it with like some kind of situation where it is fairly ob obvious that this person is so overpowered and yeah, will yeah. likely kill you immediately. You need to find a way to deal with him or get the fuck out mm -hmm. one way or another. Mm -hmm. So, and it's always an encounter like that. And then they all, and what happens is everyone gets really, it's really high stakes. They're like, oh, we got to get out of here before this dude yeah. like completely annihilates us. <laughs> And then, oh, oh, we're in the woods. Oh, thank God. Oh, I'm sweating. Oh, that was awful. Like, oh, I didn't hate that guy. Why couldn't I just hit yeah. that guy? Why didn't he die? And now, now everyone has a goal. They want yeah. to get stronger so they, they can deal with that guy. <clears throat> and also, they, everyone now has a shared understanding of how this game is going to go is that, like, 
they can't just hit everything. They have to think more creatively, which I love it when my players do. Mm -hmm. And that there are real dangers out there that can cause them harm and might like like fuck up all their shit. And that's and that adds stakes to it. So that's my oh, yeah. that is my favorite move when that's, dealing with players. That's great. Like the, the again, probably from my Reddit addiction. I'm gonna have to change change tanks, plug into this other side of the neck. But um mm. But I just remember someone, I don't know how it came across, but the idea of never, the advice of never revealing your BBEG to the party until mm -hmm. you're ready for them to kill the BBEG. And like, I think that was probably more meant to be some version of, hey, your party's probably gonna attack this guy. But yeah. I, like I love, and I mean la 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 love, just showing the BBEG, even if it's him, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, denying pittance from like a group of, of, of clergy women, right? That have maybe come to to put forth some request and uh, just small things where you see both power and insight into this individual's character are to me like saucy. Because then all of a sudden you've got this rapport, you know? Like I can tell you right now, I don't know these dudes' names, but there's a short list of like, Dude, there's one guy I can picture his face in my nightmares. But there's a short list of actors that for the past decade, I have constantly been at callbacks with, like walking back into the same room. There was one case, yeah, just whatever. You're leaving the lot, you're like passing each other. You're like, oh shit. And I'm not even <clears throat> toxic like that, truly. Like hmm. it, there's room for everybody. It's a hard biz. I wish nothing but white lights for you, but it's... There's also this sense of like, you again. Like I'm constantly in my head, I'm like, bro. And I'm sure if we just chatted, we'd be friends, we'd be tight. But there's this yeah. sense in my head where I'm like, do I have to fucking see this guy again? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Now listen, I'm not gonna kill him, but I will, I, you know, it does make, I might, no. But it does make me want to theatrically like elevate my game. All of a sudden, like I'm a little more connected. The juice is going a little faster. You know, and I think, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just love that. The more you float the BBG, the more present they are in the world. Like, no, oh, that's sure. awesome. Yeah. And know. even if it's not, even if it's not like uh, necessarily a big bad evil guy, it could just be like, you know, it's a griffin, which is a challenge rating just yeah. a little bit higher than the rest of you, and it completely annihilates this town, and you have yeah. to get out of here. And now the griffin's going to fly off to its roost on the other side of the dark forest, like, up. Oh, Looks like you are all on a vengeance quest. You have to go yeah. level up through this dark forest, climb its roost, and then kill that griffin. Yeah, dude, love it. And now you won Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and everyone gets a prize. Yes, the yeah. uh, that actor is my griffin. That's amazing. Um, mm. This is hilarious. Okay, yeah, Koopy, puzzle is my worst enemy. I, I'm defining puzzle as more... <clears throat> I mean, obviously you can have like a classic Tasha's puzzle. I actually truly enjoy those. Like throwing them up, <clears throat> some version of a Sudoku, you know, whatever. Something, yeah. Exactly. But I, but I think also puzzles can be as simple as, oh shoot, the timer's done. I did not realize. <clears throat> the It can be as simple as, you know, a magical device that someone has to roll an Arcana DC 16 or higher or whatever. Like I, just building in aspects that require interaction in some level of commitment, success, teamwork, like that to me falls under the umbrella of puzzle. But like, does that, does that clock with you, Matt? Like, like how do you feel about that? <clears throat> um, yeah, I, I, I paint with a broad brush when it comes to puzzles. Sometimes cool. it's just a riddle. I mean, I mean, quite recently I had a, I played a murder mystery session essentially. So, I mean, that was just one whole big puzzle is all that was. And like, I mean, people, people had a blast with it because they, knew that there was a answer there were a million ways to try to get to that answer and right, yeah. um it, and it, but and it was and for that group of people because they love murder mystery parties they enjoyed the heck out of it so yeah i mean i I'd like puzzle can be a broad brush it's all about to me um how to incorporate it in such a way that it is like actionable in a D and D yes. world? Yes. Because there is the like the thing that like puzzle <clears throat> takes forever, and if they don't solve the puzzle, they're all gonna what die. What the fuck do you do exactly? The water's it's... filling. No, totally. Like, th thank you for even labeling that because I think that is 
what gives DMs pause on puzzles. They're like, oh shit, dude, I don't want this to suck. Or I don't want us to be here for two hours. Everybody's like, can I roll another investigation? Like, I don't know, dude. You know, like it needs to be somehow actionable, you right. know, but I, I, I don't know. I, I've been, I think in general, the rule of three in D&D with puzzles, with encounters, with, with mm -hmm. bosses is super helpful. Like give them multiple ways to succeed. And yeah. at minimum, hopefully someone will try something adjacent to one of those three and then you can make it happen. You know? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's the deal, guys. Here's the skinny. Here's this scoop. Um, hold up. I got to read this from Sage because it sounds a little saucy. Never put something in front of the party you aren't okay with them killing or have a plan to get around them doing that. Conversely, That's never put anything fair. in front of them you aren't okay with it killing them. <laughs> um, uh, very yeah. accurate. Yep. Appreciate oh, Koopy, don't worry. There's no blood on these hands, baby girl. Um, yeah. That's very, very well put. Okay, so here's how this is going to go down. Matt has made an incredible comedy. I didn't realize that we've already almost been on for an hour and a half. The, oh. I know, that, that flew by. I, um, but listen, dude, that's what happens when you're kicking it with geniuses. Um, and by that, I mean you and chat, not myself. But this is how this is going to shake down. We're about to kick over. <clears throat> I want to minimum watch like the opening three, four minutes, dude, because it like, it, it, it captures the vibe. It captures... I think the comedy really, really well. Uh, and and then we can maybe start and stop. Maybe we can ask you some questions about that specifically, a little bit inside the actor's studio. Um, but in general, I want you guys to go and check it out because it's worth watching the full 12. There will be either, you know, on full-on distribution or perhaps later on through some private avenues. Th there are multiple episodes. I mean, this is like a full-on season of the game series. Um, but the first one is available online. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is move into, wait for it, the tank top giveaway. I messed that up. The tank top giveaway. Yes, it is upon us. I know. A lot of you are like, what tank tops? I didn't ask for a tank top. I know, dude. But we got to 125 followers. I'm blown away. My tiny Grinch heart is swelling the size of a grapefruit. And um, yeah, exactly. Matt, thank you for supporting me. Um, so I do have that queued up. Everyone that's in chat will get an additional entry into the raffle. So it'll be amongst all of the followers. Everyone that's here gets an extra one. You know what, Sage, you do need one. And here's how you wear a tank top when it's freezing. Over your coat, bro. You put it over your coat. Okay, done, we're done. So that's the second thing. The third thing, and this is requisite, Matt, I have to demand that we do this, is I'm gonna drag you into a quick section known as the rapid fire. <gasps> I know, prepare. It's where I ask you a bunch of fucking questions, super quick, super quick. And you just have to tell us like, you know, yes, no, left, right, blue, red. Oh, yes. And then we judge you for it. <clears throat> okay. So let me slide over here. I knew that I would have your camera messed. All right, cool. So we are here. I'm about to pull up the, the game series YouTube page. Let me see where we're at here. And then I think we just watched this damn thing. Okay, hold up. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. We're about to dive into this. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm not sure if you can <clears throat> see where we're at with this um, in terms of through the my actual Twitch channel, but Okay, let me see this real quick. I mean, if you play it, I'll probably be able to hear the. Yeah, the let me sound just. Yeah. Okay, exactly, exactly. Let me just get the. Seen it enough times. Yeah, I was about to say. Ah, uh, that's very funny. Are you familiar with this? <laughs> familiar with what? No, just with the series that you wrote and produced. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. You, uh, you... Uh, yo, Sage. It comes. It does not come in triple XL. But here's the thing, dude. You cut the sides of it open, all of a sudden you got yourself a cape, baby boy. All of a sudden you got yourself a cape. Okay? Really? Yeah. <laughs> You're like, that's not how capes work, dude. Okay, bear Security. with me. Yeah. <laughs> you back me up, Matt. Um, okay, sorry. I had this up and then I don't know what happened. So now we will add it again. 
Yes, of course. Yes, black out the whole thing. Of course, of course. Of course, you should do that. I was born in the dark. Okay. So let me see here. Guys, this is going to be us doing it. I want to at least watch to the point where the wizard rips his sleeves off. Because uh -huh. it was minutes before that where I was like, okay, this is... We have a lot going on. So guys, without further ado, we're going to watch the opening three, four minutes of the game series. So everybody, <gasps> shut the fuck up. All right? Buckle up. Go refill your cup of gin, Sage. And, uh, and here we go. Yeah, there's the pug. There's the ranger. She's another co-producer. It's really good. Oh my gosh, Sage says they've seen a trailer for this. Yep. Oh, it's so good. This is every DM's like subconscious. Is this chaos? I'm a pug! Hashtag I'm a pug! Yes, dude! Let's go! Making it across the pond? I love that. Sage truly is like a G. Really great guy, really great DM. It's so funny he came across that. Okay, so what you're guys seeing now, this is obviously the intro, the game is the name of the series. Obviously the game is D&D, we're familiar with that. <clears throat> That's Matt. But the back and forth- supposed to work out. Okay. And I've always loved the game. Okay, I just want to pause this. Because dude, you sent me this and it was like, you know, 10, 30, 11 at night. Mm -hmm. um, I'm there blessing some tightly rolled Indonesian kashish. And yeah. I remember I'm literally, I'm like, because I, I fucking love comedy, dude. I mean, I've really, truly, I've thought you're super funny. Like, it's very funny to me how similar but different our clowns are. And I like love that about you. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, okay, let's see what's up with this. And <clears throat> I click it and it was like right around here. It was through this sequence where I was like, oh man, this is a great premise dude like it's mm. so immediately communicated so anyway now that i've killed momentum let's watch what i'm talking about <clears throat> this was supposed to work out and i've always loved the game as a kid it was all i could look forward to when i played i had friends purpose uh, yes. adventure <laughs> yes ma'am very sorry that you're We've here all today. been in that call center. Our players came and went. Yeah. After all, it was just a dumb game to them. Yes, ma'am, I understand you want your tushy suit. No one really cared. Not like I did. All right. Is it connected to the sink? Is it connected to the sink? I love not know. Oh, yeah, it's a bidet. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. So good. Ma'am, please. I had the perfect And to be honest, so that right there, that move right there, that move, right? Customer service and KP, stick the fuck around for the raffle, baby. It's coming. But that move, guy working call center, getting lit up, right? By someone mm. presumably in Iowa, taking off the headset while someone continues to rant. Dude, that resonated so deeply with me because it's like, it's an epidemic, but I just, the, the waiter equivalent, which is like the job that was slowly killing me for a long time was, and dude, I worked at some nice spots. And so people were just so up their own butt. But when people come up and be like, excuse me, sir, like, what the fuck is this? What's going on here? Can you go ask the chef if he can do X, Y, and Z and make X, Y, and Z? In, in my head, I'm like, bro, the chef, like, like open, open palm slapped me like two hours ago. You want me to go ask him for anything? You know what I mean? So what I would do is I'd be like, you got it. <laughs> I would just walk around the restaurant and come back and be like, right. I'm so sorry. The chef said he couldn't do it. I'm so sorry, miss. I'm so sorry. And so like, you know, sometimes you just have to do that. Never meet Oh, well. <laughs> totally. Sometimes you just have to pull off the headphones. Anyway, that's hilarious. Friends, my brother, and my girlfriend. And then she cheated on me. With my brother. Oh, dude, I forgot about that. Speak. Brutal. 
Since then, I can't write, I can't think, yeah, I can't yeah. breathe. Dude, hang on, I missed the... this. I missed this beat. Boy, is Boy Genius the next Tolkien? How did you How did you get that image? Um, that is a Photoshop from yeah. a um, uh, an award ceremony I attended when I, I was seventeen. I, I won. I am. Uh, 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 I am the first place champion in the New Jersey speech and debate. Wow, uh, let's go. Well, in 2018. Um, <laughs> so good. So good. Uh, so that was uh, that was a picture of me at the ceremony. So we just cut and pasted that onto. Dude, because um, uh, it's yeah. just so clearly you, but you, it's so like it could have me. It could have been a face app. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel that. But no. Oh, it, 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 that's. It, it, I got you. It's a real deal. Okay. Well, I'm apologize for the trauma. Sage and KP, look, you're good people. You made it through. You made it out. Can't That's what's important. Breathe. Mm -hmm. but more than anything, right now, okay. I just want to This is a great play. bit. So that's why I made that post, why I rented this place out, and why I invited y'all here. After tonight, you're probably Such quick editing, dude. Like, you get right to what the story is, and I fucking lives. love it. And that's yeah, fine. Great editors. Don't care. I just want to play. So that means no names, right no here. contact information, and please, for the love of God, nobody be weird. Uh, okay, I love that. No names, no contact information. Like, our relationship exists only at this table. <laughs> I don't want to deal with any other shit. Oh, dude, that is so good. It's so funny. Okay. Okay, uh, show of hands, who hasn't played before? Uh... <clears throat> Does it count if you've never played with other people before? This is a minimum two player <laughs> game. You can't play it by yourself. I do. I make up adventures all the time. And then what? I go on them. And then what? What? <laughs> uh, yes. How do you expect us to talk to each other if we don't know people's names? I am your game master. You will call me GM. Everyone else you will address by their character names. And speaking of which, let's go around the table and get those real quick. Uh. You bud, you first. Oh, sweet. So I'm getting- And remember- He's, he's really good. Even a he's very funny. Your personal life, your ass is grass, and I'm a lawnmower. Got it? <laughs> I'll kick you out. Oh, cool. <laughs> I don't know what a lot of this means, but it says here I'm a wizard. And, and this is clearly dope. true to life. So <laughs> I'm yeah, a great wizard. Dumbledore! Yes. Do I have to have sleeves? I mean, it's a wizard's robe. Can't I just like rip them off? I mean, you can. Then I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, listen. If that doesn't get you in, you an idiot. You an idiot, dude. That is so good. All right, listen. Everyone, go. I've been dropping it into the chat. Everyone go watch the whole thing. Follow the game underscore series because they're going to be coming out with some heat. Um, truly, dude. No, listen. You guys are well on your way. I forget that in the OBS plugin, I cannot drop links. So let me drop it in here. And it's been, you know, one of like the stream elements prompts that's been coming and going. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's number one. All right. Number one is watching the incredible art provided to us by Matt. And guys, I got to be honest. I love D&D &D and I love comedy and I love supporting my friends. And this is uh, very much a triumvirate of desire for me here. Just sort of putting forward that. It's a really great job, dude. Like whether or not some fucking ah. studio recognizes that or whether or not people are willing to take the smallest of risk. Um, I hope you feel really proud of it and really good about it because, okay, good. You should. It's yeah. awesome. It's hard to do that, dude. Okay. Um, no, I mean that. Um, yeah. Now hard transition to m my bullshit. Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, the giveaway countdown. Okay. I Ooh. guess I should not have left this side by side. That's all well and good. Let me introduce you guys to the wheel of names. Now, uh, yes, uh, this is a pretty questionable third-party website that I found. Um, 
I I entered all of the followers because I did this before whenever I got to 90, I think. And I want you guys to know that I appreciate you guys. All right. We're at 125. That's way more than I thought we would get to. I'm going to go ahead and enter everyone that's in here right now. And I'm also just going to toss, it, toss in our boy, Matt. <gasps> just because yes. I want you to have an option. So our okay. boy, Matt. Okay, so if you wouldn't mind, Matt, if, if you have the Twitch page up, can you holler at me? We've got Koopy, we've got Meatball, we've got Sage, we've got KP. I will get Twitch up real quick. And if not, all, all good. I can switch back and forth. Um, uh, pointing oh, no go. Stat. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm just KP Meatball Koopy. Great. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I hope someone on this stream wins it so bad. No. Meatball. Yes, Root. Let's go. Root coming through. How are you today, Root? How are we living? Root, I've been playing Elden Ring again. I'm like, again, somehow hooked. So if I ever get my fright... Yes! Your boy, Matt, get in here, MC. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't realize it. MC Spark 100. Love that. Okay. Root, Zella. Oh my gosh. Zella is a dear, dear, dear friend, shall we say? Uh, and we both enjoyed watching that very, very much. Okay. I'm just KP. Let me make sure I have everybody. I want to make sure I add doubles for everyone here. Koopy Meatball. Shamine Boop Boop. Sorry, this is definitely the content. <laughs> Yo, if you wouldn't mind just vamping some scat for us, Matt. <laughs> uh, that's perfect. Okay, insomnia. Night. And I'm pretty sure we have everybody. Guys, if you want to be re-entered into the chat, please drop your name and otherwise forever hold your peace. Okay, foos, I got in there. Great. Okay. It's going to be awesome. Okay, guys. Are we ready to spin that wheel? God knows I am. God knows I am. Okay, guys, listen. Hang on to your butts. Hang on to your butts because somebody is about to get a fucking tank top. Here we go. I got my butt. Is my butt? I have my butt. Hold on to that butt. I'm holding my butt. Zella5812. Okay, 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 okay. Here's the deal. Here's the scoop. That's my partner. She gets a lot oh, of sugar and a lot of smooches, and she already has, has she a has tank, top. tank tops already. We're out. Babe, nope. you are cut. Babe, you're out. It's ridiculous. That is so good. Somebody is getting tickled tonight for trying to win that damn thing. But here's the here's the best part. Now we get to do it again. Wait, removed her? Well, that's just as well. I was hoping it wouldn't come down to that. But uh. now, <laughs> round two of the actual giveaway. <laughs> Holding my butt again. Hang on. Yes, Anorian. Let's go. Okay, give it up for Anorian. Yes. I'm going to have to track them down. Anorian, if you are on the chat, please... Reveal yourself. Um, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted to do another one. Just because I'm enjoying this spin so fucking much. Let's give away two tank tops today, guys. <gasps> Fuck it. Fuck it. Oh, Third spin. Second tank top giveaway. It's a giveaway. I'm just oh, loving boy. this spin that wheel app. Let's go. No, it. Yeah, H-Trek already has one. Okay. <laughs> the people have spoken. I'm clearly addicted to the spin the wheel. But I already said we're giving two away and I'm a man of my word. I'm sorry. The wheels have come off. The spin a wheel. Pun suggested. Um, this will be the final spin. <gasps> if it is someone that already has a tank top, I will reject them as a winner. Who we got? Having the the man geek. Yes, that's Alexandria. Let's fucking go. Okay. 
V-Man and, 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 and Doria. Congratulations, guys. I'm not sure what the next giveaway will be. It might be eight subs. It might be 200 sub, uh, followers. I'm not sure. But know that I still have about 13 tank tops left. And you, yes, you, could potentially get one. Yeah, Matt, thanks. thank you for your extreme patience as I make it completely all about me. Uh, it's and then had to. <laughs> you are a patient, patient priest. Okay. KP, listen. And anybody that wants to, you can drop in to coffeecops.org and simply buy one. But I know that's not as fun. And um, we will be doing a giveaway. But they're artisan tank tops. They're from the, um, essentially from the half hour comedy that I made last year. And it is, oh, let's go. Somebody got a scrap. Get in here, Sage. Bro, thank you for the sub, man. And for cranking us off. I, um... We're going to do the first to eight subs. First to eight subs. We're going to do another giveaway. Simple as that. Okay. Whew. Matthew, you've been so patient mm -hmm. and so generous with your time and with your knowledge. But are you ready? Are you prepared for the rapid fire? I have crippling anxiety, but we're doing it anyway. Yes. <laughs> oh, then you're, you've never been more ready. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now, there are no wrong answers, so I want you to just rip. All right? Yeah, I think I still do have founder badges, eh? Yeah, let me know if I don't, KP, because you absolutely should have one. Um, so, first question. Standard array, point by, 4d6 drop lowest, or 3d6 for character creation? Point by, but if I'm feeling frisky, um, 3d6. 3d6, bro, that is okay. sexy. KP, let's go! Two out of eight. We're on our way. We're on our way. See, that's right there. Two at eight subs, guys. Let's fucking go. Okay. Spellcaster or melee if you can only play one for the rest of your life? Oh, spellcaster. Spellcaster, respect. I feel like a true DM wants to manipulate time and space. Table oh, snacks. Yeah. Sweet or savory? Savory, always. Savory? Savory salt. Respect that. Okay. A warlock, a bard, and a cleric all walk into a dungeon. Which one walks out? Warlock. Warlock? Okay, love it. What does he look like when he's walking out? Bloody. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that that's a so, damn thing. That is so fucking funny. Bloody, dude. Oh, okay. If you had to jam yourself into one of the following player categories, <clears throat> which would it be? The edgelord, the actor, the min-maxer, or the rules lawyer? Ugh, the actor. The actor, exactly, yeah. As I asked, I was like, well, this is obviously redundant, um, but that's fine. <laughs> Fey Realm or Plane of Nine Hells? Oh, the Fey Realm. Ooh, okay, I didn't anticipate that. I love that. Astral Plane or Fire Plane? Fire Plane, I love the Fire Plane. Ooh, again, didn't expect that. I love that. Okay, Moon Druid or Shepherd Druid? Moon Druid. Moon Druid, love it. Okay. I almost went Shepherd, but no, it's Moon Druid. No, respect that. That's my favorite sub as well. Uh, KP, I love that. Trying to bend them often for memes. Yo, get your meme, baby boy. Okay. D100 or D12? D100. Cowboys or pirates? Pirates. Ooh. <laughs> I love it in the immediate, immediate, immediate answer. Vampires or werewolves? Werewolves. Okay. Giants or dragons? This is the big one. Dragons. Okay, red dragon or blue dragon? Blue. Copper or gold dragon? Copper. Let's go. I love copper too. That's so sick. Okay. Uh, do you prefer being called DM or GM? DM. DM. Okay. Guidance or mage hand? Guidance. Scarier thing to encounter in a dungeon. A small boy that's lost and somehow immaculately clean, or an old woman wearing rags that won't stop laughing. Small boy that is immaculately clean. What I know to kill the woman. <laughs> I don't know if I'm killing that boy. Ah, I love the fact, because listen, if you run into an old woman in D&D, Koopy, you know this, you light them up, okay? Yeah, always. <laughs> Okay. If she's lived this long in a fantasy world, I suspect it immediately. Agreed. Agreed. No, this is a high-level caster. 
potentially part of a coven. Okay, better BBEG. A level 20 wizard or a level 20 warlock? <sighs> wizard. Wizard? Okay, that's a tough yep. one, though. I thought you were going to say warlock. Better BBEG. A demon lord or a dragon king? Demon lord. Demon lord. Okay, I want to see that. Wizard or sorcerer? Petty bitch. Wizard. Wizard, let's go. Old school boy. Wizard. Oh, excuse me. Uh, fighter or paladin? Paladin. Dru Druid or ranger? Ranger. Ranger? Okay, respect. Yeah. Last question of the rapid fire, Matthew. Yes or no? Should cats have dark vision? Yes. Yes, thank you. Thank uh, you. There we are. Have you ever seen a fucking cat in your life, people? Yeah, they should obviously have it. Oh, my God. So good. Dude, you nailed that. Thank you. This was a blast. This was a treat and a half. I, uh, I'm in the process of editing together specific parts of all of the rapid fires from the interviews. And it has been very funny. Although I don't always ask the exact same list, but it's, it's just amazing to get different reactions. Um, dude, you rock, Matt. This has been awesome, man. Thanks, dude. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, no, appreciate it big time. Root, thank you for the rundown. I didn't know you preferred shepherds and pirates. Oh, I might as well go back through that and get some answers. Um, Matt, how can we best like stay in touch with you, support you, stay up to speed with what you're doing? Um, well, I mean, they want to support me. Matt underscore the underscore curtain on Instagram is where you can find me or on TikTok. Um, but if you want to support the show, which I would much more prefer, you can, uh, of course, watch the pilot on uh, <laughs> YouTube where the game underscore series on YouTube at the game underscore series on YouTube. Um, on Instagram, we are, wait a minute. I have that backwards. No, it, we are the game series on YouTube at the game series on YouTube. I'm going to drop Instagram the link in right here. At the game underscore series. Our TikTok is at the game underscore series. But YouTube, we're at the game series. <laughs> Love it. Love it, dude. Okay. You guys heard him. Sage like, and KP. Comment, subscribe. Yeah, please. All exactly. That, that smash, fun. smash yes. that like button. Um, <gasps> KP and Sage, thank you so much for the subs. Matt, thank you so much for just like being such a patient dude, so knowledgeable. This was rowdy. This was rowdy. Okay, so here's how we do it, guys. I always like to end these streams by raiding another D&D streamer. Those of you that are uh, OGs know about this. This is one of my favorite things to do. Um, oh my gosh, so Fusca came in earlier and... I'm so torn because I've got several friends that are all streaming right now. Okay, we're going to go to From Afar Podcast because they have the, the lowest viewer count. Um, except, shit, they're playing Overwatch, which is an awesome game. And I don't mean to judge them for that, but we, we raid Dungeons and Dragons people. Okay, so we're about to raid Fusca. She's amazing. It looks like Ninners is DMing right now, which is incredible. He's also a fabulous DM. Um, but if you can, stick around, give them some support, and um, and yeah, appreciate all the love, guys. Everybody coming through. Maddie, anything you want to say before we get out of here? Um, many, many blessings and crits upon you all. <laughs> all That's so great. May your table run to roll 20s. May your foes roll ones. Uh, oh, that's so good. Okay, guys, as always, take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. I will be streaming some session prep tomorrow, and it's going to be a spicy one. So if you're around, come through. Uh, other than that, we are out of here. So, a peace. <laughs>